Yeah, well done, yeah. team. All right, on the Sunrise News read this morning. Australian farmers have reached a tipping point with what they call supermarket price gouging. It's understood up to 30% of fruit and vegetable growers could walk away from their farms as a result. Yeah, for more, we're joined by journalist Angela Mollard and marketing expert Matthew Bywater. Guys, good morning to you, Ange. First up, uh, there are calls for an inquiry into this. Should it be fast-tracked? Oh, absolutely. And this is only a month on, Mark, from meat producers talking about the fact that they weren't seeing agility with the supermarkets in response to the fact that they were uh, paying, you know, they were earning a, a gold coin price for their meat and then it was being sold for 20 kilograms in the supermarkets. Look, these farmers, this relationship between consumers, farmers and the supermarkets has to be better than it is. We're hearing it constantly. And look, fruit and vegetables are the staple of our diet. Woolworths brands itself is the fresh food people. If they can't get pricing right, if they can't keep farmers satisfied, the consumers satisfied, then they're not meeting the main aim of their job, which is, is to produce food for us to eat. Matthew, it's a commendable campaign by the Nationals. However, there is already a Senate inquiry this year into price gouging and the competition between our supermarkets. I'm sort of wary of more inquiries because then it just means more money that's still not going to the farmers. Yeah. Does it come down to consumers and the choices that we're making at the supermarket? Well, it's tough for consumers because you're still, everyone's price sensitive, especially in recent mm. times. But there's a bigger issue here for consumers is that Australian produce, all of our agricultural outputs are well sought after globally. Mm. So if we start, if our our farmers start shipping overseas where it's already happening in some markets they get a much higher price because Australian produce is a high premium product if they start shipping overseas they'll get a higher price it'll be more profitable then then we have to rely on imports ourselves which means we don't have control over our own um, agriculture and we're going to be held uh, liable for all the pricing increases that they want to have so it could be a huge problem for consumers too not just the farmers yeah, it's yeah. sort of the case they have in the UK isn't it when they have to import so yeah. much food but yeah. Australia Scary. has such a concentrated supermarket monopoly doesn't mm. it mm. And moving on, guys, an article popped up this morning about how to navigate untidy guests if they're staying in your home over the holiday period. Very interesting, especially teens and children. The clincher. Do you say something to the parents or tell the kids off yourself and guide us through this minefield? Well, my partner actually wrote this article after he had his teenage uh, nephew staying with him. He's on a gap year from the UK and he basically left the bedroom a mess, didn't bring the glass of water down. And he was, he, look, now the nephew will probably read the column and see that his, <laughs> his ways need to improve. We'll be watching but, right now. Yeah, exactly. But look, I'm a huge believer in the village raises the children. I remember once my teenage daughter was in the back of a friend's car on a long car journey and she spent the whole time on the phone, uh, you know, on her, on her mobile phone. And my friend said to me, look, you know, it was a bit rubbish. We were in the car. There was a few of us. Everyone was chatting and she was on her phone. I was so grateful for that feedback. I was then able to speak to her. But, you know, I do think that it's up to parents to be, uh, you know, teaching children a bit, the manners in these situations. But I think it's fine also for relatives and friends to step in if they do it kindly and with the child's best interests at heart. I feel like yeah. if you've got a teenager staying and leaving a glass of water and a wet towel on the floor is the worst thing that happens, it, it might actually be a, um, a, a godsend. Uh, Matt, what do you reckon? What would you do in this situation? Well, I'd, I'd swap a, a wet towel and a glass of water for walking your Lego every morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that might be better. Oh, I think ground rules and, and Angie's right. I think it's part of a village, you're part of family. Um, the hard thing is, they've been raised by the parents, talking to the parents may not help you. Um, a situation I've been in, I've just said, These, in this house is the way we do it. Yeah. And you've got to do it and kindly. It's, house, right? it's just yeah. like, yeah, I don't care what you do outside, but in this house is how we do it. Yep. So. Okay, very, very quickly, um, there's a story in the paper today about a city cider who paid nearly $300 to avoid standing in a queue to get these Instagram famous pastries. And if you could get out of doing anything by paying someone else, it was 300 bucks to stand in this queue for a few hours, what would it be? I would, at the theatre or at a concert, detach my own bladder and give it to someone else to go and stand <laughs> in the queue at the toilets because there's never enough toilets for women. There aren't, aren't there? They're always the furthest away, the female yeah. toilets as well. Uh, Matt? <laughs> uh, I, I hate getting petrol. I like petrol. It's one of the great things about EVs. I hate lining up for petrol and just waiting for petrol, then going inside the shop to pay for it. Get yeah, the yeah. app, Matt. Had, it's so, changed my life. Yeah. Seriously. The app? Yeah, Good. that's my hack for 2024 okay. for you. Get you the petrol out. Fixed, Matt. Yeah.